Well, good evening, church family, and those of you from our community or wherever you may be joining us from tonight. We're thrilled to have you join us for what we call Midweek Manna, a chance to pause here in the middle of the week and reflect on God's Word together. And uh, We hope and trust your week is going well to this point. Uh, if you're like me, and I'm sure many of you are, your, your week has been busy, and as you look toward the calendar for the rest of the week, it's going to be even busier. And we certainly understand that, but uh, again, thankful to have you take a few moments here tonight to pause and as we uh, focus on some thoughts from God's Word. And along the lines of being busy and, and, and throughout the week, and I know we all can relate to that, I actually came across a couple of surveys and articles this week that talked about the concept of stress and looked at it, looking at it in, in different ways. One was a survey that was actually done by Wallet Hub, I believe it was last year, in which they used some factors such as work stress and financial stress and family stress and health and safety stress, which all of those would include things like obviously your work environment, uh, the, the money aspect of it as far as cost of living in these areas, even transportation and healthcare, all of those things were good factors into this. And they took roughly 180 cities and they listed the most stressed cities and then from that list anyway, the least stressed cities. And you might, you might find it interesting like I do, that I did anyway, that from their uh, survey and at least what, the, uh, what they used to determine this, that they determined that Cleveland, Ohio was the most stressed city in America. Uh, financial stress and family stress and health and safety stress actually helped it be number one. Number two was Detroit, Michigan. Those two, while uh, you might be interested, may not be all that shocking to hear, but wait till you hear number three. Number three was Gulfport, Mississippi, which I was like, whoa, what? that seems a little unusual. But Gulfport, Mississippi, actually one of the things that drives it up was financial stress. Baltimore was four, Philadelphia was five, Memphis six, New Orleans seven. Again, many of those probably would not be shocking to see. And then I was taken back by number eight. Number eight was Birmingham, Alabama. And then if you keep going down the list, I was taken back even more by number 19 on this list. Number 19 on this list was Montgomery, Alabama. And obviously we are in Troy, but very close to Montgomery and relatively speaking close to Birmingham. And so we can appreciate those cities and many of us have spent many time, much time in those cities. So I find it interesting to see those numbers. If you're curious, by the way, at least in this group, the least stressed cities, bottom five were Fargo, North Dakota, Overland Park, Kansas, Madison, Wisconsin, South Burlington, Vermont, and Fremont, California. Those are the least stressful cities according to this survey. But you know, when we think about stress, we think about it in terms of the fact, we usually think about it from a negative perspective, but there is some good to stress. Experts are saying, they even mentioned in that survey that we all need a little stress. We need a little activity to keep us going. And, and stress in and of itself is not a bad thing, but too much stress can overwhelm us, particularly if we allow it to. And that led to another survey that I came across that talked about the surveys, the stress of America. This also is from 2022. And it highlighted many, many of the things that cause Americans to stress and things like inflation, COVID still a little bit at that time, the war in Ukraine, Many things you may think about were things that would cause stress as well. And on this, when it said in, in a survey, you know, on a scale of one to 10, with one being you have little or no stress and 10 meaning a great deal of stress, it might not surprise you to see that the average reported level of stress for all adults was five, which is a little elevated since the pandemic hit in 2020. 2020. But here's what's really surprising, and perhaps a little disturbing, that of those that were surveyed and they're asked about the, the impact that stress has on their day-to-day -day functioning, 
Over a quarter of all adults, over 27% of adults, said that most days they are so stressed that they cannot function. And it may surprise you that a little bit under half of those are younger adults, at least those that are 35 and under. Almost 37% of adults reported that when they are stressed, they can't bring themselves to do anything. And then there are a number of symptoms from stress, such as forgetting things, not being able to concentrate, having uh, headaches, difficulties making decisions, all of these things that are symptoms that are as a result of too much stress in our life. And really we're roughly a uh, quarter, in fact, here's one more to share with you. The poll revealed that when adults are feeling stressed, about three quarters of adults, 76%, reported that there are aspects of their lives that are negatively impacted. And a lot of surveys, we, we're not gonna take the time to go to a lot of statistics in here. This came from the American Psych Psychology Association, this particular survey that I'm sure you would find fascinating if you took the time to look at it and to look it up. You may say, well, what does this have to do from a Bible and spiritual perspective? Well, in this survey from the American Psycholo Psychology Association, Psychological Association, they started ending the article with the alarming numbers they found from this survey of how many people are under stress and how it negatively affects them, even to the point perhaps of not being able to do anything. And they made suggestions on what people can do to help keep their stress under control. Some simple steps to help build up resiliency in difficult times. It's an acknowledgement we're all going to go through days and weeks that are more stressful than others. We're going to go through times that are more stressful than others. It is a reality of our world and our country and the life in which we live. But I found it interesting that the first thing they mentioned, the first step they said that can help people in dealing with in a capable way of building up the resiliency to uncertain times was to disrupt negative thinking. In other words, get out of the habit of thinking about what the potential consequences of what's going on, what the worst case may be. That's where anxiety comes from is where and a lot of the what ifs aspect of it. What if this happens or what if that happens? When we start worrying about things and getting stressed about things that have not even been a reality yet. And it disrupts our life. And you maybe know where I'm going with this from a Bible perspective. When I, when I read that and I saw that, it made me think, of course, of a passage that Paul writes in the Philippians chapter 4. When he says this, and really I'm going to start in verse 4, he says, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice. Let your reasonableness be made known to everyone. The Lord is at hand. He goes on to say, verse 6, And not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, present your request, let your, let your request be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. We're very familiar with that passage. A lot of times we focus there on verses 4 through 7, but then verse 8. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there's any excellence, if there's anything worthy of praise, think about these things. He goes on to say, verse 9, what you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, Practice these things, and the God of peace will be with you. But that verse 8 in particular, what we need to do with our mind, allow our minds to be focused on things that are positive, on things that are uplifting, things that are true, things that are honorable, just, pure, lovely, commendable, anything excellent, worthy of praise, let that be where our minds focus on. And boy, if we can learn to do that, how much better off will we be in life as far as dealing with and handling the difficult times that come up? Having a positive mindset or things, focus on positive things, doesn't take away the difficulties in life, 
But what it does do is, even as the article suggests, is it, it does allow us to handle the situations and really build up some resiliency to those situations. It gives us a proper mindset to help us as we deal with the high stress days and times in our life. But if we allow ourselves to focus more on the negative things, that's when we allow that stress to build up in a way that it does have a negative effect on us. It may keep us from being able to concentrate. It may keep us from being able to function the way that we need to. But focusing on the things that are true, things that have happened, things that are real, not the what ifs in our life. And then focusing on the things that are positive. That's why I love the old song that we talk about a lot in times at the, in our season of Thanksgiving in November. And we have to remember that as God's people, as Christians, we're always called on to be people that are thankful. But the old song that says, count your many blessings, name them one by one. And just maybe in, in those times that we are going through high stress, uncertain times, uncertain days, maybe if we can remember to take a moment and pause, get out a pen, get out a paper, and just start thinking about and writing down the things we are thankful for. All of our blessings, name them one by one. And say a prayer to God just thanking Him for that. Again, it's not going to take away what's causing us to stress. It's not going to take away those difficult circumstances. But if we do that, and then maybe go and face them, maybe we'll have a more positive outlook, a better mindset, a better perspective to help us tackle those difficult days. And sure, we're still going to have some stress, but it'll keep the stress from overwhelming us to the point that it causes a, a diminished function in our life and day-to-day -day living. Well, just some thoughts for us tonight here in the middle of the week, particularly as we're reminded of the great truth we have and see in, from this great letter of Paul in Philippians chapter 4. And I encourage you this week, and as we all do, as we go through a busyness of life, and it's so easy to get caught up and get stressed, but let's all remember to take a moment and Think about the things that are going on that are good. Think, think about the things that we, are, we can be thankful for. And let's be sure to thank God for it. That can help us as we battle whatever it is we're battling each day in our life. Well, again, we thank you for taking a moment to join us tonight. We're thankful for those of you in our church family, of course, that are joining us this evening. We're always glad to be together, whether physically or virtually, and hope and trust you're doing well. For those who may be guests of Collegedale, maybe not familiar with our church family or perhaps watching one of our videos for the first time, we're certainly thankful to have you join us as well. And we'd love to connect with you. We'd love to hear from you. And then you can call our church office. You can send us a message by email or Facebook or you can follow us on Instagram. Any of those ways to connect with us. We certainly would love to hear from you. And also, if you'd like to hear more about our church family, we'd love to have the opportunity to share with you more uh, about our church family here at College Dale. And for all of you, we remind you and invite you and encourage you to join us for our time together this Sunday. We assemble for Bible classes at Bible Classes for All Ages here at our building at 9 a.m. And then we assemble for worship here in our auditorium at 10 a.m. We'd love for you to join us here in person, uh, but if you're unable to do that, and you can join us online through our YouTube channel as we stream our worship at 10 a.m. And so we'd certainly love to have you join us this Sunday as well. We hope and trust you have a blessed rest of the week and the busyness of, of life we have going on this week. I know for my family and our church family in a number of different ways, we, we pray as we go through the rest of this week uh, that we remember to take a moment and thank God and praise Him for all He does for us. We hope and trust you have a blessed rest of the week as well. As we close tonight, let, let's close with a prayer. God, we, we acknowledge we probably don't do enough. I know I don't enough to take a moment to think about all our blessings and name them one by one. And help us to remember that so that we can focus on things that are true, things that are positive, things that are lovely, that can help us as we go through each day, uh, that we can battle the stresses we face both on a daily basis and those that may come up on the difficult times and difficult situations. We pray your guidance and strength that we can 
we can learn to do that in a way that can help us indeed uh, better handle the stresses of our life. Father, as we record this tonight, we're mindful of a number of people in our church family that are going through those difficult times, some that are recovering from illnesses, recovering from surgery, some that are battling and cancer and going through treatments for that, some that have lost loved ones. We truly lift all of those to you. We ask for your healing touch to be with them. Wrap your arms around them. Father, we know there are a lot of situations continuing to go on in our country, in our world, from a political perspective, and think about what's going on in Ukraine as well. Um, we, we know there's a lot going on, even people still recovering from natural, natural disasters that we've had last several months in our country and even in our area. We continue to lift those situations and those people to you as well. And Father, as always, we pray that the leaders of our community and our state and our nation and our world will allow their, have their minds and hearts open in a way that they allow you to guide them, that they can make decisions that will allow us as your people to live the kind of lives you desire us to live and have opportunities to share with others good news about your son, Jesus. We pray all this in your son's name. Amen.